Thank you so much. I am super excited to be here. Thank you. There is definitely a delay. I'm not sure why I keep on hearing myself, but I want to thank our sponsors uh, all the way from the UK, Cirrus Soft. Thank you for sponsoring my session. I appreciate it. I'm coming from you from sunny, well, currently dark Los Angeles. A little bit about uh, before I get into who I am, I'm sure you've seen this slide throughout the uh, uh, day, night, morning. This is about my 13th or 14th hour. So I am turning down my, so I don't have to listen to myself talk. So hopefully you guys could still hear me. Um, I want to uh, thank the SharePoint uh, conference folks who uh, were co-running this amazing conference with us. Again, it's my 13th hour here, uh, 13th hour, about 16th hour. We started about uh, 8 a.m. LA time. Anyway, I'm happy to be here. Thanks to our sponsors, you've seen them. You know them, you love them. Fishing, CoreView, my friends over at Cirrusoft, uh, thanks for sponsoring. We can't do this without you. A little bit about me. Uh, again, I'm a native uh, New Yorker. I currently live over at Venice Beach, California. I work for a company called Fujitsu. What my passion is, is creating the digital workplace. Digital workplace starts with Fujitsu Scanner. <laughs> I run uh, platforms and alliances there. I'm a five-time Microsoft MVP, and my claim to fame is I've beaten Michael Jordan in basketball uh, one time. Uh, I'm not going to get into the story right now, but I will tell you when I see one person. Other sort of fun facts about me, I've never dropped my cell phone ever. I have never been sick a day in my life where I missed school or work. And I've never been in a fender bender in my life. I've never been in a car accident. So that's a little bit about me. So thanks for having me. And uh, I'm thrilled to be with the organizers of this event. I think I mentioned earlier, I'm very passionate about, about digital transformation, um, really creating the digital workplace, which is what the session is all about. And I'm originally a New Yorker. And then I lived in Chicago for about 20 years, and I've been in LA, the LA here for the past three years. Maybe you've heard, maybe you haven't. We are giving away three Oculus Quest headsets. See that I am not a gamer, and uh, although I'm a VR, I enjoy looking at VR. Uh, if I win, I'm going to go into the back. I don't even think that speakers can. Certainly not an organizer. So make sure you submit your answers to, uh, to win the raffle, uh, where you have to have at least five an correct answers and submit for a chance to win three. We're giving away one in each of the three regions where we are, um, we are coming. Now let's see, I just wanna make sure that I don't have any urgent messages, people can me. Good. Moving on, uh, we've collected some money from sponsors. Part of that money is earmarked for folks in our SharePoint community, for SharePoint slash Microsoft, uh, who've been affected by the COVID uh, pandemic. Uh, please reach out to us, write us, uh, info at m365virtualmarathon.com, and uh, we want to we want to help you. Also consider joining to follow charities. Uh, Well, we said this is a marathon, so I thought I would give you a marathon. I have run 11 marathons. I know you might not know it just looking at me, but I, uh, I don't love to run, I love to eat. So in order to, in order to run, or I'm not sure which came first, I run so I can eat, or I eat so I could run, one or the other. 
Um, I, I'm a runner because I eat so much. So I see value in it. This is the New York Marathon a couple of years ago. This is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge at the beginning of the race. You can see I'm certainly not by myself. I was with uh, 30,000 of my best friends slugging it across the bridge, going toward Brooklyn. There we are again. And there I am after I crossed the finish line. Uh, I've had a lot of proud moments in my life. This is one of them. It ended up raining. The temperatures really, really got cold. I think it ended up being about 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, it was very cold when I finished the marathon. But as you can see, I'm a smiley kind of guy, so uh, I was happy to just finish. I've been a part of the SharePoint community for about uh, 13 years. I was there very, very beginning. This was, uh, these are some pictures from SharePoint Saturday, uh, New York City. You might have heard the reason why we ended up putting on this particular event is we were running SharePoint Saturday in Orange County in LA here, and the pandemic we had to cancel our event, of course. So we thought, hey, let's put on a virtual event. And the virtual event started as a full day. And we thought, hey, let's do 24 hours. And then we said, hey, let's do 36 hours. So here I am at midnight presenting to you guys. And um, what can I tell you? 12,000 attendees, 400 plus sessions, 300 plus. It's amazing. I'm thrilled to be a part of it. I'm thrilled to be a part of this community. I'm gonna hear John Levesque tomorrow, power platform guy. You guys might know Heather Newman. My buddies, Johnny Lopez and just Tom Bailey. Uh, it's an amazing community. Adoption starts early. These are my three princesses, Sarah, Ash, and Caroline. Uh, I know you're probably saying to yourself, how do you, Jeff, have uh, teenage daughters? Well, I don't have teenage daughters. They're actually all in their 20s. Uh, uh, Sarah, uh, she works for a digital agency. Abby uh, is a psychologist. And Caroline is just finishing up uh, her junior year of college. When they were finishing up college, uh, when Sarah was graduating, I uh, had uh, emailed her a couple of job opportunities, and I followed up with her about a week later. I said, hey, Sarah, how's that job hunt going? I said, you know what, Dad? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't see any jobs. And the bottom line is 20-somethings, they just don't check their email. So what did I have to do? We have to meet the employees where they are. If they're not going to check their email, how are we going to get in front of them? That's, that's what we're going to talk about. How do we get them to come to this new digital workplace? It starts, you have to plan. Have you ever heard the term, if you fail to plan, plan to fail? This picture is a gentleman named Thomas Dawes back in the 1700s. And this was uh, his subordinate, a guy named Paul Revere, and some of you might have heard of Paul Revere. He had the famous midnight ride over in uh, the New England area. He said, the Redcoats are coming, the Redcoats are coming. Paul Revere actually went half as far as William Dawes did on that famous ride. But yet, William Dawes went twice as far. No one has heard of him until, of course, the presentation. And why do we know Paul Revere? We don't know. Paul Revere was one of all the influencers in the New England area that fateful night. You need to go to our influencers and our organizations and figure out what to do with them and how to do it and really get them talking. Make this sort of new initiative, make it, make it work, make it stick, make it something where um, not a nice to have, but a need to have, sort of like running for me. I need to run else I can't eat as much. You might have seen this picture before. Uh, the Microsoft sort of um, mantra, right? Uh, Satya Nadala says, we want to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. I love that. How are we going to do that? 
voila, we need the harps. We need everything going right now. Microsoft 365, that complete intelligent solution to empower employees. It's all about the employees. It's built for teamwork. It's integrated for simplicity. It's, it's secure, right? Um, we're going to talk a lot about that. What I'm going to talk a lot about is user experience. I don't know if there are any sessions on user experience, but I will tell you that user experience is unlocking this digital uh, workplace, this modern workplace, everything that Microsoft is calling it. Everything I do in my day-to-day -day life, I think about user experience. I need you to start thinking about you. You know, when I was putting together this deck, um, I had, I've been using the slide for about a year now, and now more than ever, the way we work has changed. Right? We're all working out of our homes. We are not going into offices. We're probably not going to be going into an office until I'm guessing October, November of this year. So now more than ever, this shift from in-person meetings to virtual meetings webinar, sales enablement training, call it whatever you want, the zoomination of the, of the world, right? We're all going on Zoom calls, having Teams calls. I think that people are looking at Zoom as personal and Teams as business. I, I was on, uh, suggested to my family, hey, let's have a Teams call. They said, why aren't we doing it on Zoom? Uh, and I could give them a good answer, so we had it on Zoom, but I will tell you, uh, so we've been using, uh, all, all you need to do is get Zoom bombed once and you switch over to Teams. The way we're working has changed. I think it's changed forever. We talk about the new normal, what's it gonna be in the future, what's it gonna be now? The way it's gonna be is we're gonna be a, a virtual. I, I think that I was reading saying that uh, the end of the year, only half of the staff will be back in the office. And he thinks that for quite some time, it's only going to be 50% capacity. Right, some so some teamwork trends. I was watching Bill Bear earlier, um, actually about seven hours now. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. He's talking about five different generations working together. This whole idea of, team-based collaboration, that 80% of our, our time is spent collaborating with our colleagues. Of course, now that we are even further apart, I think that that number is down a little bit because we're not in person, but I will tell you that um, it is definitely not, it, it's not the way it used to be, and I don't think it's going to be that way for quite some time. 72% uh, of workers will be working remotely this year, I believe that, and for about 41% of workers say mobile apps change the way they work. I believe that. All those statistics tell you only one third of you guys are engaged actively at work. What? What is that happening for, to the other two thirds? What are they doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. About one third of those folks are completely checked out. They're never ever going to uh, kind of top. And then we got that third that I call them the fence sitters, right? How are we going to move the needle? How are we going to move it to critical mass? That's what our jobs are, is to move the needle. And you know, I'm sure you guys probably realize unengaged workers cost the world economy a lot of money. But, Conversely, high employee engagement is very closely associated with an organization's success. So how do we get engaged? I put together this little definition, right? Uh, the property of the relationship between organization and its employee. Each employee is one fully absorbed by and enthusiastic about the work and takes positive action to further the organization's reputation and well, I know you guys just met me and some of, some of you have known me for years. Uh, I just started recently at Fujitsu and to be honest with you, before I started at Fujitsu, I didn't really think much about scanners, but now that I'm here, I'm thinking that scanners really are the on-ramp to this digital transformation. 
and it's one of the things that I didn't really think about before, but now that I'm a part of it, I think about scanners every single day. Gosh. So my point of view on this whole digital work is you've got your file shares, business applications, social computing, <coughs> search solutions, employee directory, throw an email. I call that swivel chair technology. You're going from one to the other to the other. And you're probably used to it, right? It gets very confusing. So I came up with a vision statement, right? That an intelligent digital workplace experience connects people, information, multiple destinations uh, to meet employees where they work, right? Give me, serve me up something that is easily, that I can easily use and will make my job easier. At the end of the day, we want to amplify employee satisfaction. We want the employees to act. Got to be personalized, have to anticipate uh, need the need of the employee uh, if i'm connected to joel maybe i should also be connected to dipti so we have to anticipate the internet we have to anticipate what it's looking for it's got to be available anytime anywhere on device bill bear talked about search earlier search is generally the number one pain point in every single organization and yet most organizations weren't doing it about it. just they're okay with employees being um sort of less uh not not necessarily less uh motivated but more or less uh, where they're not really engaged they're not they can't find things and they don't care it seems like when when it is approached with this they generally don't do anything about it they generally uh they just want you to keep searching for it. We want to surface business metrics and really serve as that communications hub across the organization. So what is a world-class intranet, right? We broke down into three areas, communities and projects, knowledge and insights, and tools and applications. I already talked about uh, the secret sauce to a successful digital workplace is being having amazing user experience. The second part of that equation is communities. Just like we have an amazing SharePoint community, communities within organizations are where the magic happens. How can we make that happen in your organization? It's got to be easy to find your employees. It's got to be, you got to be able to find the employees in the organizations. Right, this digital intelligence, it's not just another technology. Social collaboration, it's just not. It's a journey. Running a marathon is a journey. This digital workplace experience is a journey. And guess what? As employee engagement goes up, workforce productivity also goes up. At the end of the day, we want to drive profitable. Some insights. I broke this down into six areas, right? Of a connected company or a company that is on the right track. Create more efficient work processes. Surfacing and sharing best ideas and practices. Finding information in key documents. Enhance interaction with key business partners. Engage employees. And then finally, rapidly disseminating critical information is very, very important. I want to make sure that, uh, that everybody can hear me. I'm doing that. And can. Because companies uh, with socially engaged employees are more productive and they don't leave the company. And guess what? Time spent searching for company information is reduced by 35% using social and collaborative technologies. I mentioned we're on a journey, right? So if we're at uh, a level two where you have point solutions, support the needs uh, based upon specific user needs, how do we move down that line to getting that enterprise strategy in place, standardization on a collaborative collaboration platform, uh, the anytime, any place access really uh, 
to, to that culture of collaboration. It doesn't happen overnight. But what really does help is having that, uh, those search bots, right? It prevents your employees from drowning in that sea of information, cuts down on unnecessary system devices, unites employees, and really makes sure that the information that they're receiving is properly utilized. You've got increases in social interaction, create problem solving, preservation of company knowledge. These are the problems. These are the problems that I see when I'm out talking to organizations. Employees aren't engaged because they aren't getting timely access to resources. The skills and knowledge are being missed because of a disconnect, pinpointing employee talent. The budget is being wasted on new hires, contractors, or third party providers. And I apologize to all our sponsors who happen to be third party providers, but I told you earlier, we're going back to the marathon. Uh, if you don't see value, they're not going to use it. So make sure when, you, when you're selling solution to organizations that they receive that or else it's just shiny. talked earlier about what a world-class internet should be, personalized, having great search and nav, sustainability, mobile, responsive. And now let's do a deeper dive into each one. Personalization. What does it look like? If I'm working for Grant Thornton and I'm an associate there, my news is served up in a beautiful way here, right? That sort of uh, make it really easy to digest. This is probably the area that I'm going to spend the most amount of time I work. Tell me what I do on each one of my projects, tasks, conversations that are taking place on both Yammer and Teams, documents that I might have recently saved, the things that are important to me, different articles, different um, people that I'm following. All part of the digital workplace. And then finally, uh, career development allows me to manage. Uh, my career basically all right here on my homepage. Now, I'm a partner, very similar look and feel, but completely different content is served up. I've got my partner dashboard where I'm able to see the things that are important to me, the revenue, proposals and process, uh, other things that are basically that I need to know on a day-to-day -day basis. And then again, same sort of thing. Else we say connecting with my associates and colleagues. A completely different look and feel, but you see that area where I get to see my apps that I'm using. Uh, my hub, basically, we came out right into your digital workplace. So I get to see my calendar, my meetings that I have, unread email. Um, Featured news. I love having pictures of employees there. Um, using rich media is definitely a great bit driving feature. Key dates based upon, uh, again, from my Outlook calendar. Social conversations, everything from um, internal Yammer to Facebook, Twitter and other different communities that I might belong to in my organization. Great way to get employees uh, engaged is really to start polling. Uh, within Yammer, there's a very easy way to set up polls uh, just to really take the temperature of employees. Search, I already mentioned earlier, number one pain point in every organization it's no different here so connecting the colleagues to knowledge using this knowledge hub so if i type in aerospace experience it's clients that are served i'm able to see people that are associated with it and then i'm able to see the different documents based upon industry based industry feed Client profile, having easy access to the industry news, seeing the clients that are associated with it. Very client centric, uh, where you're able to 
do sort of a holistic portrait of the client, having a deeper understanding uh, and more opportunities to cross sell across the organization. And again, uh, have an industry feed so home client. I want to see other what other uh, uh, aerospace organizations are doing in that space. Right, uh, the future of search in the digital workplace is powerful, flexible, multimedia, and assistive. Right, so we're we're really using bots here. Just some different examples so you can see uh, different looks and feels. Enterprise social, also known as collaboration. I remember about five years ago when uh, Microsoft and Salesforce came to an agreement to be partners. Everyone wants to partner with these guys, but when they partner together, what the benefit is is they both they both win. What we did was bring in a chatter feed from Salesforce right into Office 365. The activity stream really mimics how users work across different platforms. Mobile responsive. Uh, this is uh, from Discover Card. So there's no change moving from your desktop to your tablet to uh, mobile. I'm loving it. Uh, again, this is another sample of uh, what what this could look like on a mobile device. And then mobile workforce uh, company up in Canada. This is what they do. Having intuitive navigation is definitely going to be a big win for organizations. She sees her profile. This is basically just a mega nav that choose the different uh, areas. And uh, this happens to be the resource center. You see the left side nav here. Um, and having that type of user experience is really going to get the employees to come back. Left side nav here as well. News and video, people, places, resources, and tools. Another sample, and uh, a question came in earlier. Uh, every single sample I'm showing you is off 65. Some of it is on prem, some is 100% uh, uh, in the cloud, in the Azure cloud. Another great sample. So let's do a deeper dive into Microsoft's 365. Let's talk about uh, collaboration first. There's got to be at least 75 uh, sessions on Teams. I'm not going to bore you with all these amazing uh, statistics. It's actually, since I published this, I would say everything is up just a little bit. There are a lot more than 13 million daily users. Well, why I showed you this is really uh, the four areas within Teams that I want to make sure that everyone knows about. We know about communicating, we know about collaboration, customizing and extending, and then really uh, knowing that it's very, very secure. I talked earlier about Zoom, uh, Zoom bombers. You don't really see anything. Uh, you don't really see Teams bombers. That, that idea of that team creation wizard with templates, love, status note and redirect, brand new, probably about six months now. Shared calendar also about uh, three months old. Love. Um, love this idea as well. Uh, uh, having the e-discovery, audit logs, supervision, the DLP for teams are all important things that really make teams a very, very robust platform. Analytics in the Teams client uh, with a couple of clicks of a button, you're able to see different users, what they're spending time on, um, 
messages, the type of messages, that type of thing. Basically, analytics in the team center as well. Uh, I live on a planner. This happens to be planner for a network and deployment. I live on Microsoft planner uh, every single day in teams. Having a telephone number management, direct routing configs, dial plans, all part of this is also uh, a major benefit of using teams. That sort of real time. Uh, you know, let's take a look at this. So let's see. Let me get out of this just in case. Um, I'm sharing this deck, so this video will be, uh, it's embedded in the deck. So down. What happened? There we go. That uh, real time translation, as I know that's happening right now. Workflow. Um, John Levesque is going to be talking a lot about creating flow in Teams. Um, the Power Platform this is all going to be covered tomorrow using Power Apps, Teams Apps. And then security, right? Uh, if you were at Bill Bear's uh, keynote earlier, he talked a lot about this intelligent security graph. Uh, everything from all the emails that are analyzed to devices scan to the global consumer and commercial uh, cloud accounts, 18, point, 18 billion web pages scan, um, really unique insights informed by intelligence and signals. Uh, and basically the security score on each one of these. The automatic classification of documents. This is where I sort of have been living in my current role at Fujitsu. Scanning in documents and then having them get auto classified and sent to where they need to get uh, sent to based upon invoice state, number, account, description, Everything it all starts with scanning the scanning technology and having that auto classification of documents. Um, this has a lot to do with where Cortex, Project Cortex is how it works go. So this idea of good process drives results, right? I talked earlier a lot about running marathons. When I ran my first marathon, I just didn't go out and run 26.2 miles. It's sort of like crawl finding why are we doing this? What's the, the business milestone? What's the justification? What are some business drivers? The who, who are the users? How do we influence them? And answer the question, what's in it for me as the end user? And then finally, the technology context. Uh, what platform do we need? Uh, we, again, we live in a day and age of the shiny new thing syndrome. Do we have to get new technology? or can we use what we've got? I like to try to use as much as we can. At the end of the day, we want to deliver accelerated, accelerated option and analytics. Too many times organizations forget these first, forget to do the vision, they, they forget to do the design, they just start building, testing, deploying, and maybe once in a while they'll iterate. 
take a step back, gather the inputs, define the opportunity, really create that vision and roadmap for the organization. And then get into the like doing a content assessment, do a, a, a content you know, really having a content review. And then I mentioned earlier user experience, get the visual down, the prototype, and then define what the technology is. And then you start building testing it. And this is basically uh, what it looks like. Some additional tactics to drive adoption and engagement create incentive programs where you're really uh, coming up with a specific challenge and reward to create buzz, get that sort of excitement going in the organization, disseminate weekly trivia, uh, tips of the week, um, really sp identifying those specific workloads that the community addresses to make the lives of the end easier, right? We want great user experiences. It starts with What's it for me? Workshops. Um, without doing these, we don't know what the employees think we know what they want, but until we actually talk to them, we really don't know. Create a governance plan, purposeful collaboration. My buddy Sue Hanley, uh, she spoke earlier as well. I think she's doing another session tomorrow. Sue is the governance queen. I never, I never really thought about governance except that it was a pain in the butt, right? to identify collaboration, communication channels, including the internet, and really come up with a governance plan. Uh, so you have a clear understanding of why are we doing this and what are the rules or the responsibilities and goals and processes of the organization. Conduct listening tours, gather feedback, structured manner to understand the impact collaboration is making and where the gaps exist. Keep on looking for those gaps. They're there. Don't be offended that they're there. They should be there. Our job is to reduce those gaps so it's a continuous improvement. Uh, and then the last tactic is really drawing a line in the sand. I'm not a big draw a line in the sand kind of guy, but I will tell you um, sometimes at my organization, we were moving off of Skype and onto Teams. And people were kicking and screaming. We're like, oh, we love Skype. First time in my life, I ever heard anyone say we love Skype. I wish we were playing buzzword bingo because uh, I would definitely have Skype on buzzword bingo. And there was a connotation with Skype. It was okay for me. Teams much more. Um, again, I want to thank everyone for joining us. You've probably seen this for speaker feedback, or event feedback, but I do want to leave actually one slide. I think I forgot one slide. My favorite slide. Uh, uh, let me get my favorite slide for you guys. I don't know what happened to it. What happened to my favorite slide? I can't imagine I skipped favorite slide. Go anywhere. I am going to find my favorite slide and show it to you guys because that's the kind of guy I am. So sit tight. I don't go anywhere. I'm just finding it for you guys. Let's see. Um, One sec. Let's put the slide right here. And now we are back. There we go. Phew, crisis averted. Five, must have principles for a successful digital workplace. Create an engaging community, uh, create an engaging user experience and see the community with the right users. 
corporate rich media, right? That's nothing more than pictures, videos of the employees. Let's get them. Let's put them in the spotlight. Deliver targeted content and enable personalization. If I'm sitting here in LA and I see they're having a picnic in the UK, I'm gonna my feelings are gonna be hurt. So let's serve up information that that knows where I sit and what my position is, so I get personalized information and personalized content. Focus on culture and leadership buy. I mean, uh, without leadership buy, and we're not going to have budget. Without budget, we can't create these amazing digital workplaces. And then tune into the what's in it for me. Uh, if we're not bringing value and there's no and there's no value in the what's in it for me, we're not going to do it. So let's really focus on that and tune into that. So everything that we do, creating the digital workplace, it has to do with making your employees' lives. Now, with that, I thank you for joining us. Event feedback, speaker feedback, again. This is put on by volunteers, myself, Joel, uh, Galen, and Ryan uh, for you guys. This is basically a large SharePoint Saturday uh, that just happens to have up to 12,000 uh, registrants. So uh, I thank everyone for joining us. I thank you again in various languages all over the world. And then this is me. This is the easiest way to get a hold of me. Stay in touch, uh, link in with me, write me. Um, I'm posting these decks. Follow me on Twitter. And with that, I am going to escape and see if there are any questions. Turn up my volume a little bit. Hi, Jeff. Th thank you very much for, for this wonderful session. It was very much insightful. Um, at the moment, we don't have any uh, questions in the live event, but if there are any questions, please let them come in to Jeff. Great. Uh, thanks, everyone. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Uh, uh, thanks for Jeff, being an uh, awesome producer. Yeah, uh, Jeff, uh, th there's one question. Uh, question from Dirk. Do you see conflict between Teams and SharePoint both being a kind of uh, portal? So there's definitely a, a line. There's definitely a line between. There's definitely a line between uh, where Teams stops and where SharePoint starts. To me, the Teams is the, the, the hub, and then SharePoint is part of that, right? SharePoint is sort of the plumbing. It's the underneath of Teams. Teams is the platform, and SharePoint is part of Teams. You could also say Teams is part of SharePoint, but two completely different things. I'm storing my documents in SharePoint. I'm surfacing them in Teams. I hope that helps. Okay, thank you. Uh, are, there any, are there any other questions? Please um, have it into the Q&A section. All right, uh, if there are no other questions, I thank you guys. Okay, thank you Jeff, very much for, for your insightful session. Thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you and see you soon.